In the last video, we looked at drawing a Gantt or Cascade chart. In this video, we're going to look at using one. In the question, it says the Gantt chart below represents an engineering project. An engineer decides to carry out some spot checks on the progress of the project. In part A, we're asked which activities must be happening at 12 noon on day 8. And in part B, which activities may be happening at 12 noon on day 15. OK, let's do a bit of revision. This is our Gantt or Cascade chart. This is our critical path. So A, C, F and H are the critical activities. These all need to start and finish on time so we don't go beyond 26 days for our project. 26 days is the critical time. B, D, E and G are non-critical activities. So B can start at zero days. It will take three days to complete but we could start this as late as four and still get it done in time for seven. So this has a float of four, D has a float of four, E has a float of five, and G has a float of four. So we're asked which activities must be happening at 12 noon on day eight. So let's locate 12 noon on day eight. 12 noon on day 8, and I'll put it down there, is going to be, and I'll just move this into place, just here. So 12 noon, we're looking at which activities must be happening. The way I'm going to do this is to draw boxes over these. So if I now put these over, that now is activity B. And they're not 100% uh, on the lines, but hopefully it gives you some idea of what's happening. This one now, activity D, will do something like so. And then we've got activity E, again, another non-critical activity. And then we've got activity G. OK, so what we're going to do from here now is look at which activities must be happening at 12 noon on day 8. Don't fall into the trap of putting it just here. Remember, these are the time periods that have passed. And in this case, it's days. So we're going to look now at what must be happening. So if I consider trying to make it such that these are not happening, if I move D, I can move it and as far as I can go is this point right here to that 13 line. So I can see that D must be happening. If you don't have the luxury of slide in the box, you can count the other side. So we can see that we've got four time periods to move in, but we've actually got four and a half time periods the other side of the line. So D must be happening now at 12 noon on day 8. I can't move that the other side. If I could do that, it, uh, it would, it, we could have it as maybe happening, but this must happen. So we can see now by moving these, we can tell which ones must happen. So clearly C must happen. That's in the critical path. That cannot move. We can see that D must happen. If I look at E, quite clearly we can see I can move that such that it doesn't have to happen. It might happen, but it doesn't have to happen. Another way of looking at that now, I've got five blocks here. I've got four and a half here. So quite clearly we could clear this line if we wanted. So I could move that there and I've cleared that line. So E might be happening or may be happening, but doesn't have to. So let's write down which ones must. And we've got our uh, C just here. So let's write C. We've got now D. So D. We've got D. And we've got on here just C and D. So let's just check those. Which must be happening. We can see that E doesn't have to. So it's just going to be C and D. C and D must be happening at that point. I can't get away from that. I can't move that such that we clear that line. OK, let's look at the other one. We're now looking at 12 noon on day 15. So let's put another line just there. 12 noon on day 15 is going to be bang down the middle. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Um, it's not too close to the colour that we've got. And we'll put that just here. So which may be happening. So let's consider now moving these into place. F must be happening. But we can move E so it may be happening. Doesn't have to happen but we can make it so it may be happening. So from here, we can see we can move both E and G into position such that they may be happening at 12 noon on day 15. F must be. Those that are maybe is simply going to be now E and G. So there we go. That is being able to use a Gantt chart or Cascade chart. 
As stated, you won't always have the luxury of sliding these into place, but if you just consider now what we can do in terms of the float in relation to the length and say to yourself, can I move it past that line? If so, we need to consider now whether it must happen or it may happen. So quick intro, hopefully that's just topped up from the last video and gives you some idea on how you can use these.